Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Thanks for tuning into MSD.TV. This is a rulings update and clarification video for you guys. I know it is LCQ day. I want to make sure that you guys have the latest updated information so that you guys are well informed and you guys aren't cheated or taken by surprise, especially on such an important day. And the day after is even more important if you're going to be playing at WCQ. So best of luck to all of you guys. And let's get into the topic of today's video. So the first two rulings I'm going to be talking about is going to address some stuff I talked about in the past. The first thing would be the Saryu Japan penalty if your opponent shuffles the cards back in rather than bottom decking what kind of game state are you in and the second one is going to be addressing the whole ash versus uh, the servant of endymion how does that whole thing play out with the email and everything the whole thing i'm going to be talking about that in a much wider scope because i talked about it in a super narrow scope and i think that was unfair so i'm going to broaden everyone i know you guys have talked to me about it dm'd me i do pay attention this isn't just like a one-way talk i do pay attention read all your comments and i'm going be addressing it right here so don't worry about that guys afterwards i've got a couple of rulings that are i'm seeing a lot of illegal plays happening and i'm also seeing some people calling out plays that are not illegal illegal plays so i'm going to be addressing all that regarding like salamanga we have orcus we have guard dragons and we have chaos dragon levianir and this is super meta relevant especially for those of you guys playing lcq wcq you guys have to catch these plays because they are tiny little plays that have significant advantages if they do go off. And I want to make sure that you guys catch all of these things. So stay tuned for that. Now let's address the first thing. So the first thing to address is the scenario where Saryuja's cards are shuffled back into the deck rather than being bottom deck. So you have three cards you have to put back to the bottom. But what happens if you shuffle it back in? Well, the answer is if you shuffle it back in, you get an irreparable game state, which should result in a, a game loss. In the past video, I mentioned like, oh, so one may argue that it's an accepted game state because like all, everything's private and you may have additional copies of the same part even if you draw it. But overall, the deck is now damaged to the point where you can't really fix it. And an irreparable game state is basically only allowed if like that error could have been corrected and it's like a repairable game state to begin with. So in that case, yeah, you're going to receive a game loss if you do shuffle cards back in. And some may argue like, oh, what if I have another chain in that Saryuja chain where I, I would shuffle the deck anyway? Like the game's would self-repair. Um, To be completely fair with you guys, if you have a situation where one player can actually do the shuffle back in, one player cannot, well, the thing is, they're both still irreparable with the moment that, that effect happened because who knows? But judges may be like, oh, you've gone too far. Maybe some judges are a bit more lenient, some of them not. But overall, it should be an irreparable game state, and there should be no exceptions to this because, like, oh, one guy had a Rota and he was able to shuffle the deck and fix it anyway. But then at that very moment before he plays the Rota, the game state is still damaged beyond repair. So. What do you guys say to that? That is exactly how I would rule it now, and I, I've accepted the logic of that. So, yeah, judges may vary on how they want to rule it because sometimes there's other factors that kick in and uh, may alter these results. But that is exactly how it's going to be. So, overall, that is an irreparable game state if you do shuffle the cards back in because there is no way in that very moment that you could actually fix it by taking those cards you put back into the bottom because you can pick any three cards now since it was all private knowledge. So that's the first thing to be addressed and that's all right. So, moving forward. The second thing to address is the Servant of Endymion versus Ash Blossom Joyspin. Can you activate it again? Globally... Everywhere else except for TCG US, I guess KDE US, they are going to say no, you cannot. I want to be clear about this because the past rule, the precedent rule, is that you cannot do it. And with the email from US YGO rules saying you can, that is throwing a wrench into the US system where. Yeah, we may be forced to honor it. I don't know. So you guys let me know what they rule at WCQ. Like, leave it down in the comment section because I'm very curious of whether or not we're actually going to be following that or we're going to do what the rest of the world does, which is follow the past precedents where if you attempted to sum summon something that has a clause where you can only special summon it once per turn, you cannot use it again. So yeah, there is that thing. So I just want to be clear with you guys, this rule where Julia talked about how she supports it on Facebook and then there's like that email from uh, USYGO rules, that is mainly only going to apply if it even applies in uh, the North American scene. like. I bet Australia doesn't follow it, EU, like Europe, UK, they're not going to follow it. OCG definitely won't follow because they have addressed that in their own email previously when the whole cards were relevant about how, hey, this is not allowed. And I think it's also in the database as well. So there is that to talk about. So yeah, so I guess 
ask your head judge regarding this one. All right, guys. And uh, please let me know what they rule at WCQ. That's it for the updates. Uh, here's a quick little plug. If you guys want to help support this channel and keep this channel running strong so I can stay connected to you guys, I know I can communicate with you guys through Patreon as well. Check out the Patreon link down in the description below and uh, go ahead and get access to your proxy requests. Battle Wasps are available right now for everyone on my Discord so you guys can go there and uh, test it out and see if you like Battle Wasps. If you guys like Battle Wasps or all the stuff in the Battle of Legends, you can also check out the TCG player link in the description below to get yourself a nice pre-order of Battle of Legends. Really sweet stuff. Yes, I am also now affiliated with TCG Player. Yay! Anyways, let's go on to some of these illegal plays, not illegal plays, regarding Salamangre, Orcas, Guard Dragon, and Levineer. These are very simple plays that are just so easy to just blow over and completely forget about that uh, you, if you get cheated on these, it will be absolutely devastating. So the first question is, if my Orcus Harpoor gets negated by Ash Blossom Joyous Spring, am I allowed to special summon monsters outside of the Dark Attribute? And the answer to that is, yes you can! And I'm just going to read the card text right here for the explanation. You can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one Orcus monster from your deck except for Orcus Harpoor. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except dark monsters. Notice the word also, that is a conjunction. That is a conjunction that merges the two effects into one. Therefore, it is part of the effect and not a condition. If you use Ash Blossom Joy Spring to negate the effect of special summon, you're going to negate that entire line, including the part that is going to lock him into dark monsters. And why am I talking about this rule in particular? It's because in a past video of mine of a live duel, a player got his harp or ashed. And then he summoned out Cerberus and everyone's just in the comment section calling him out. It's like, oh, you cannot special summon. Oh, you're locked in. The answer is you are not locked in. And uh, because the whole effect was negated and therefore you're allowed to special. It's different from Crescendo. Crescendo is a bit of a condition because it's like completely on a separate line and they're locked into dark machine monsters. And if you summon special summon anything outside of a dark machine monster, you can't even activate that Orcus Crescendo. It is like a hard lock right there. So just keep that in mind. So Orcus Harpoor, if it gets negated, uh, you will be able to special summon monsters outside of the dark attribute. If you guys want a comparison, just read Orcus Crescendo's lock inning part of the effect where you cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate this effect except for Dark Machine monsters. That is a completely on a separate sentence compared to our card text of Orcus Harpoor where it has the also conjunction all wrapped up together. Ruling number two, Salamangri Gazelle will not activate in your hand if it's another Salamangri Gazelle that got sent to the graveyard. It's actually part of the first line but apparently a lot of people have been redacting it out of their memory so let's just read right here if a salamangre monster is sent to the graveyard except salamangre gazelle except during the damage step you can special summon this card from your hand okay so that is all there is to this one but why are people asking well it's because in the last live duel video a salamangre gazelle got sent to the graveyard and a salamangre gazelle got summoned from hand it is something that apparently according to the comments is something that happens very frequently because people believe that when a salamangre monster is sent to the graveyard they they read that part but they completely skip the except salamangre gazelle part and then they just go ahead and summon out gazelle so that is what happened and if it does happen and you advance the game stayed forward and both players didn't catch this it got caught later on this is one of those cases where it would be an accepted game state like unless of course you can actually reverse it if it doesn't go too far you can definitely fix it and uh, just go back even though it revealed that there was a gazelle in hand that is something that is repairable and if you don't catch it it would result in a re well an accepted game state so it's a repairable game state at first and if you don't catch it well you should catch it now because we just talked about it and also i want to address this thing that people have been asking me if a salamangre monster is sent to the graveyard except salamangre gazelle except during the damage step no that does not mean you can activate it during the damage step it just means both this trigger activation condition first of all cannot be a gazelle that does it and it cannot activate during the damage step it's both of those things not like it's not a cancellation of it okay so now that we got that out of the way let's move on to the next one ruling number three is a big one it is that guard dragons coming from the extra that can only be special summoned out once per turn they have that clause if i'm looking at a pisty or an lp or an agrapain it states on the very last line as their condition is that you can only special summon out guard dragon pisties once per turn or an lp or an agrapain these are all once per turn very much like the sky striker link monsters so you cannot reuse them okay so because you cannot 
we summon these monsters like why is it that so important well it happens when you counter your opponent especially when you have an interaction against your opponent and then they somehow play through it did they really play through it so the combo i'm explaining here is this interaction where you're using uh beat cop or land fornicus to do your combo with a white and black dragon this can happen with a danger thunder player or it can happen with a crusadia guard dragon player regardless of uh, who you're facing off and dealing with this combo uh, so say they have the bro both the uh, LP and the Pisty pointing towards a center zone that they're kind of far away from, and then they activate the LP. You use Ghost Ogre or you use Gamma to negate and destroy or just destroy it, and then the rest of the effect does not go through because it was either negated or, well, it cannot meet this condition. What happens then? Well, in any case, uh, the player goes ahead and summons an additional monster and then they make a triple burst and then now they activate Pisty, but they usually don't have very many dragons in the graveyard. White and black dragons are of course no me monsters, they cannot be special summoned out aside from their own effect, but but LP does not have that condition. So they summon out the LP and that's where the clause breaks and that's where the illegal action takes place because they have already summoned out LP for the turn. That was the LP that they put out and they can't revive that LP anymore. But they do it anyway and then they go into the aggro pain and then they summon out a boss dragon, a hot red dragon or a crystal wing. And that is like, what just happened? It's like you lost complete value. Sure, you stopped the the, the Brotar or like the Levy Levy and you from ripping a card out of your hand that needs to get searched out of the deck. But because like of the line that comes out of this, this is definitely one of those repairable game states if you catch it early on. But if you don't catch it and you play into your turn, you draw your card, you start doing things, this will be one of those cases where it may become an accepted game state because the whole play was correctable. So make sure you correct it first. Don't get caught on this because the biggest difference between this is there's a fat dragon or there is no fat dragon you're dealing with because they're still going to be able to push out the heretic seal of heavenly spheres against you and that plus one of those dragons it's just so much yeah so i want to make sure that you guys know guard dragons they are special summoned only once per turn and that is their condition and that is their limitation okay make sure you catch that super important and finally, we're going to go into Chaos Dragon Levianir. So, can Chaos Dragon Levianir declare an attack if their effect gets negated by an effect failure and they've attempted to activate their effect? And the answer to that is, yes, it can declare an attack because the, the clause that does not allow it to attack is part of its effect. And it's part of the same effect which you have negated, and therefore they are able to attack for sure. So, yeah, it's also conjoined by the word also so if you negate that you negate everything and they will have a 3000 attack beat stick to go against you why is this really important it's because it's a difference between life and death it's between game and not game match or not match why do people argue it's because some people are struggling struggling to survive and they start feeding a bit of lies to your opponent and hopefully that they don't call a judge and they pass turn to keep stayed alive and that's it and if that ever happens, call a judge over, they can read the card, and because of the conjunction, it makes it fairly easy to give you that ruling where, yeah, you can still declare an attack, because it is definitely not a separate clause entirely, it is just part of the same effect. So, yeah, if you negate that, I'll get to swing for an additional 3,000. And if they're doing, like, the triple dark effect, you throw a Veiler out, now you've rip one card out of your hand and they still get to declare an attack you decide whether or not that's worth it for you and uh, yeah that's why it's super important these are like very minor little details but they have significant impact towards the game so that's why i want to make sure that you guys have these rulings available for your lcq today good luck to all of you guys if you guys enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button if you guys want to see more stuff from msd.tv hit that subscribe button ding the notification bell and uh well i'm gonna be going on vacation for a little bit hopefully i'll see you guys guys much later stay tuned i'm trying to fix some nishi as well so that he can also do some market watch check out the patreon link down in the description below appreciate all of you guys i do listen to you guys even though like i like to argue the point a lot of the times like playing devil's advocate and kind of want to argue things in everyone else's perspective i do appreciate all of you guys for leaving the comments down in the comment section and i do read them so love you guys and uh Best of luck to all of you, LCQ, WCQ, and uh, share with me some of your stories in our Discord. So I'll see you guys in the next one.